Man, we sure are such close friends! Okay, the first thing that I noticed was that every single character had white squares around them. If you're gonna rip sprites off a white background, set your settings to something like this. Also, how did all of those characters from different franchises come out of nowhere? Continuity? What's that? Yeah! I wish we all lived together in a house! I have an idea! And Spyro comes out of nowhere. What is it, brother? <laughs> we should live in a house together! Having someone repeat the same idea of someone else isn't really that funny of a joke. Well, it just so happens that the brother has a mansion! Woohoo! Let's go steal it from him! Yeah, I can smoke cigarettes. It'll be cool. Well, what are we waiting for? You have got to stop introducing characters out of nowhere. Now watch how Luigi magically runs towards us. Hey, uh, what the fuck are you guys are doing here? Ha! <laughs> Give us the fucking keys, bitch! What? You heard him! Hey, why the fuck are you guys are taking my mansion? Because you get the bone a lot, Luigi! I love awesome fight scenes. Well, it looks like we got a mansion! Wahoo! It's pretty extreme! <sighs> I think I have lung cancer. I think I have a crush on Snake. Obvious subplot is obviously obvious. Why is the bottom of the screen warped? The voice acting in your video is actually pretty well done. However, your animation, your leaving of white boxes, and your inconsistency are all laughable. However, I must say that I can't wait to see episode 2. So who here remembers Darkness the Curse? He did a review of Shadow the Hedgehog and I commentated on it. I've got another one. This time it's Sonic R. Unlike Shadow the Hedgehog, however, I'm not a huge fan of this game. It was worth playing once, but I can never go back to it. It just doesn't have that appeal. How will this affect my commentary? Let's find out. Oh my god! Please turn it off! Please, it's been three days! Watch this facade he made about Tails Doll torturing him with Sonic R music. It's hilarious. Why has it been three days? How long has it been? I don't remember! I've been forced to play this for so long! With that music playing in the background! Make it go away! Make it stop! Someone kill me! Please, someone kill me! Oh my god, what do we want to play now? He's selecting it for me! The tail's not in control! Oh god! Not Radical City again! Please! Have mercy! Don't make me play it anymore! Don't make me play it! What do you mean I have to start reviewing the game? What do you mean I need to stop my bitch and just review the game? Will you suck out my soul? Please have mercy on my details now! Don't kill me! I'll review it! Sonic R! It's so wonderful! I love Sonic R! This is the greatest game of all time! I swear! Don't you just love these graphics, how everything's so blocky and just terrible? And listen to the music! It's Europop! Everyone loves Europop, right? Oh, I know I do! <laughs> the controls are so wonderful! I love how you can't turn or anything like that! After all, turning is for the weak! No one needs to turn anymore! You're going to cover all of this in your review. So what's the point of this? Everyone goes on and on and on through the goddamn race. The racing is so generic and unoriginal that I can't stand it anymore. The controls are terrible. They're fucking... 
turn down the volume of your sound system. Your ears, and if you have speakers, everyone around you will thank you. I think I'm gonna keep to the vaults as a running gag for me. Also, remember Archie? According to someone else, Darkness the Curse made him. Also, prepare for a lot of screaming. Sonicar has got to be the worst fucking Sonic game I've ever played in my entire life! You wanna know what this shit is? Hey Text, what have you ever done that was actually helpful? I'll tell you what this shit is, it's nothing but a generic racer with nothing original about it in the slightest! I already brought up the controls. The controls are the worst controls I've had to deal with in any racer known to man! You're jumping all over the place. Can you please explain why it's generic before you start talking about the controls? Thank you. Now right now I would normally say that the controls just take time to get used to, like every other Sonic game. But this game's replay value doesn't justify the means of getting used to the controls. WHY THE HELL CAN'T I TURN?! WHY CAN'T I TURN?! SOMEONE EXPLAIN THAT TO ME! I'm running around, trying to turn around a tight corner, will Sonic turn? NO! FUCK NO! It doesn't let you! I think I, I, I recall in my last review, it's never been proven before that apparently Sonic can turn on a dime! His last review was Sonic 06. I'll get to that eventually. But I've just gotta say this. The part where he turns on the dime was in the Sonic CD intro. It was a movie. Name one game where he turned on a dime. I mean, we've never seen that before in our entire life! Who the damn was this?! And as for the characters, we have Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and Dr. Robotnik. You also have a few other characters, like Mecha Knuckles, and the Eggman Robo, and of course the fucking Tails doll, along with Metal Sonic and Super Sonic. Do these characters sound original to you?! I came up with this argument in a whopping five seconds. You see, you can't play as the same character in versus mode. Sonic and Sonic doesn't work. So Metal Sonic is so if two people want to be Sonic and Metal Sonic, so they can be the same character without actually being the same character. Get it? They're just mecha forms of the other characters! What happened to, oh, I don't know, uh, Fang! Fang the Sniper! Or Knack, if you want to call him that! Or the Chaotix! What happened to them?! WHERE THE HELL WERE THEY WHEN THEY MADE THIS GAME?! WHERE WERE THEIR BRAINS?! Turns out that that sound fading in and out is actually the studio, not the footage. Also, Darkness's use of pronouns is very confusing. Where were they when they made this game? <sighs> anyway, I brought up the music, and the music is perhaps the most annoying, crappy shit I've ever heard in my entire goddamn life. Going around, listening to this crap, playing in your ear. I mean, with songs like Can You Feel the Sunshine and Living in the City and Supersonic Racing, does that sound like a, like, like fun to listen to? Yes! Yes! Fuck no! It's a pain in the ass to listen to! It will make your ears bleed! Wow, even more than your yelling? <sighs> I apologize for the screaming, but as you can hear in my voice, I am fed up with this shit! A lot of you have defended this game, and with all due respect, I HATE THIS GAME SO FUCKING MUCH! And it's not because I suck at it. No. In fact, this, in fact, when you think about it, the controls are really bad, but there's another griping issue. The fact that the game is TOO EASY! That's right, too easy. You don't even have to stay on the goddamn ground all over the place. Make, meaning you can make shortcuts for yourself. SHORTCUTS FOR YOURSELF! This is the stupidest concept in the entire world! I don't see how so. Tons of racing games have shortcuts, even Mario Kart. And I love it. Entire world! Why doesn't it make you stay on the track, or at least give you the option to take certain shortcuts? It makes the game too easy! Especially when you're, when you're a character like the Tails doll, or Eggman, who happens to be, who happen to be able to FLOAT OVER WATER! THAT'S THE CHEAPEST THING IN THE ENTIRE WORLD! People can float over water that others can easily jump over?
No, stop. I don't want that joke to get old. Of course the AI barely ever does this, because the AI is the most retarded AI in the entire universe! Interesting claim you made there. Here's my counter-argument. The only smart one is Supersonic, and that's another issue. If you are playing against Supersonic, he will kick your ass! Well, no, not necessarily. It depends what map and what character you're playing. Like, for example, I have beaten beaten Supersonic with, say, Metal Sonic. Or regular Sonic. Well, no, not regular Sonic, because that's another issue. I'm going to repeat myself from my last commentary on you. Either edit out your mistakes, or take some acting school where you can do it all in one shot. That is, without screwing up. Also, structure your reviews, please. The fact is, the characters are always set up in the same way. It starts with the first five characters, it's separated into two groups, the first five characters and the last five characters. If you play as any of the first five characters, meaning Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, or Dr. Robotnik, you will, you, the AIs will be Sonic, one, either Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and Robotnik. If you play as the other five, it'll be, the AIs will be one of them. So, it's always set. So, if, if you play as, the, as Metal Sonic, the Tails doll, Mecha Knuckles, or the Eggman Robo, you will always be, be, be racing against Super Sonic. But what if you haven't unlocked all the characters yet? And the Tails doll, especially on the map you're looking at right now... Just tell me all the stages that you can beat Super Sonic on, and all the ones that you can't, please. Which is the Radiant Emerald. It is impossible to beat him! I swear to God, I don't care what kind of gamer you are. I'm looking back at your video, and I noticed that you said that this game was too easy. Looks like you got a challenge. I spent three damn hours trying to beat Metal Sonic on Radiant Ember with a Tails doll, and it is impossible! I, t I took every known combination, got every single ring. I couldn't do it! Don't even try! Or, if someone can do it, I want to see fucking proof! Here's a video by Zero Badniks. I'm gonna speed it up because it gets boring very quickly. If you hate the game so much, the fact that it's short should be a good thing. And as for the unlockable characters, the maps have coins in them. You collect all five coins in each map, which are which tend to be scattered around, so you have to go off the track to find them. It will allow you to, you know, play as a as one of the characters, as one of the unlockable characters. Or each each fucking map is our one of the chaos emeralds. Collect all seven. And you get supersonic. Hmm. Collecting the chaos emeralds again. Where have I seen this before? Oh, in like in minus Sonic CD, practically every single Sonic game before this. At this point, they should be coming coming out with more of original concept regarding plot. You want to hear the plot? Apparently, Sonic and Tails were running along, ran into a sign that offered a race for the chaos emeralds. Sonic notices that Doctor Robotnik is participating, so he runs off to join the race. This is the stupidest idea in the entire world! A race for the Chaos Emeralds? Are you shitting me? I thought people complained when Sonic games' plots were way too complicated. I've never heard someone complain about it being too simple. Who came up with that? That is the dumbest plot I've ever, ever heard! There's not a variety in character. 
characters. There's no plot here, and as for the graphics, well, you know, the graphics is the one thing I might not be able to harp on, because considering it was on the Sega Saturn, the graphics aren't too shitty. I mean, Knights was be looked better in my opinion, but this game does look a bit better than Panzer Dragoon did. I'm not, I'm not saying Panzer Dragoon's a bad game, because it has a lot, lot better gameplay than this, but as far as graphics goes, the game isn't that terrible. I mean, it looks alright, I guess. There's even a atmospheric conditions, which happen to be completely random! Atmospheric conditions don't change the race much, and yet you're yelling about it. That's right, the atmospheric conditions are random! You can't choose as far as, far as uh, atmospheric conditions goes. And the multiplayer, we have a standard race, uh, I guess is kind of interesting, and collect the balloons. And the balloons are always in places where you can never get to them. Well, you can get to them, but they're, it's too damn hard! I swear! It just... Don't keep changing your thought. Oh, what did they do?! This is all they have to offer in terms of the Sega Saturn. This is the only original Sonic game for the Sega Saturn. Well, besides Sonic 3D Blast, but that was available on the, on the Sega Genesis. If it's not original, why'd you bring it up? And that game wasn't that good either. The game's just a waste of goddamn time. Never, ever, ever find yourself playing this game. Never! I'm done! Have a nice fucking day! Notice how the footage that he played on the left side of the video during his final score was played earlier in the review. So yeah, whether or not I like the game doesn't actually change that much. Hmm. Also, I want to show you this. It turns out that he doesn't record his own footage, he just takes someone else's. If I just did that, I would be able to make reviews every single week. A beginner's guide to being a modern day Sonic fan. 12 easy ways to tell if you're part of the problem plaguing the fandom of a game series dying a horribly painful, crippling, agonizing death. Did you just contradict yourself by telling people how to become a modern Sonic fan, but then instead telling them how they can be part of the problem? Yeah, I think you did. Number one, you must be born in 1996 or any year after that. For some reason, there hasn't been a good Sonic game released since 1994. That's impossible. Only grown-ups are allowed to play children's card games. I'm aware that the video studio screwed it up, and that Sonic's not a card game, but I just had to make that joke. It was too good to pass up. Anyways, Sonic is intended for kids. I know that that means that adults can play them, but when they made the games, they weren't really focusing that much on you. This explains why I keep seeing more and more Sonic fans of the newer games. Because they were kids when they played it, and now they're old enough to go onto the internet. Number 2. Play the classic Sonic games via Sonic Mega Collection, Sonic Mega Collection Plus, or Sonic Gems Collection, and think you're experiencing the same wonder and greatness as having the actual cartridge itself. Yes, because having more plastic makes all the difference. Number three, blame those classic games for having 2D graphics. First off, you spelt blame wrong. I would be able to overlook this if it was only in the text or only in the script, but it's in both. How do you overlook that? Do you just read directly from the video? That aside, I agree with you. Hating a video game because it's 2D is like hating a video game because it's 3D. It's stupid. Number four. Read the Archie comics and believe the characters, situations, and stories are actually part of the game's storyline. Although they are different series, I don't see much of a problem with someone that wants to connect them, or try to make connections between the two. Number 5. Watch Sonic X and only hear about the Sonic anime movie and the 390 Sonic cartoons. I've seen all of them, and my favorite, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, is mediocre at best. Why isolate Sonic X? Number six. Think that Sonic X is actually part of the game's storyline. This isn't much as a counterpoint as a quick fact, but the Sonic X cartoon was based off the games. Also, why are you isolating Sonic X again? 
is Sonic Underground really part of the game's storyline? Number 7. Become addicted to reading Sonic fanfiction. For some reason, fans prefer to make male slash fiction. Sonic and Shadow, Sonic and Tails, Sonic and Knuckles, and for some reason, Shadow and Silver will do. I could probably get addicted to it because it would probably be really funny. Besides, fans make fan fiction because they're fans, right? If a fan wants to make a Sonic Knuckles fan fiction, what's it to you anyways? Number 8. Think that just because you played every game released from Sonic Heroes to Sonic Rivals 2... Now we see that he isn't reading from the text because he said Sonic Heroes. You can call yourself a Sonic X. That's a lot of Sonic games, you know. Also, cutting at mid-sentence is kind of fun. Number 9. Join a Sonic forum and start flame wars over frivolous topics such as... A. Voice acting quality comparisons of Ryan Drummond to Jason Griffith. B. The newer game's superiority, or lack thereof, to the old ones. Small text. C. About couple possibilities, realistic or not. D. Arguments with Sonic purists about the quality of the newer Sonic games, such as... Before you continue, I'm just gonna say that debating is actually kind of fun. Also, wasn't the arguing about Sonic games quality point B? I wouldn't know, I couldn't read it. Sonic Riders, Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, Sonic and the Secret Rings, and the next game, Sonic Unleashed. Or E, over whether or not Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 was a good game or not. This has been the third time that you've repeated yourself in one point. Quality, quality, quality. It wasn't. I haven't completely played the game, so I really can't judge whether or not I agree with that statement. However, based on my past experiences with the Sonic fanbase, I'm probably going to love every minute of it. Number 10. Do repaints of Sonic characters using MS Paint and call them original characters. The character palette wouldn't be original, but the character concept might be. Or in fact, make your own crappy original character drawings using a patent pencil and paste them on DeviantArt, thinking they're actual art. How is it not art? The fan drew the character, his or herself. Number 11. Listen to Open Your Heart and Live and Learn and His World 30 times a day, each. 11.9. Fail to recognize that there are three different versions of his world. 11.75. Forget that there are other Sonic songs. And 12. Threaten to commit suicide if you miss an episode of Sonic X on 4Kids TV, or if nobody cares about what you have to say about Sonic. Would anybody actually do that? This has been a message from a hardcore Sonic fan. You heard it here, folks. A super fan is a person that tells other people how to be fans. Once all you annoying, over-emotional, short-sighted, dumbass motherfuckers to shut up and quit ruining the fan base. Am I the only person here who notices irony in that statement? And play Sonic 3, goddammit! I have, and it's not the greatest Sonic game I've ever played. It was okay, I guess, but I can name tons of better Sonic games. And to think this video I found was more liked than hated. So yeah, in conclusion, don't tell people what to do. Also, I'd like to thank SuperSonic407 for getting me some more Shadow Star pictures. Hopefully this will be my last Sonic-related commentary in a while. I'm not gonna do much of a big intro for this. All you know is, it's the guy who did the video on Gingers Do Have Souls. Look it up! He's apologizing for slavery, so we're just gonna take a look through and take the piss out of the fucker. Enjoy! Oh, did I mention this video has swearing? Cause it does. A lot. Dear black people of the world, I know I'm not white. Well then, what the fuck are you? Because gingers are not a race. It's a fucking hair color. Okay, I'm a ginger. I know I'm a ginger, okay? Okay, people, so apparently, um, 
Whatever you have on your face, your hair, apparently that's a race. So now I should be saying, I know I'm a brunette, okay? I know I have tits, okay? I know I have a vagina, okay? It doesn't make me white or black. Yeah, but what's wrong with saying that you're a ginger? But, I'm a redhead. But I have white people in my blood. Really, I wouldn't have guessed. I thought you would have had crocodile in your blood or something. So yeah, he's white. So it appears that Slap Happy Gamer's doing a good job so far, I guess. But just wait. I have white parents, okay? And I think I can speak for everyone. No, you can't, because you're a fucking idiot. That's real mature. I'd rather have a decent, clever human being speaking for me, thank you very much. What's with the spur of insults? Sure, he messed up in thinking that Ginger was a race, but I've seen people make mistakes with races all the time. Some people would say that the French are a race, some would say Americans, some would say British. But those are cultures, not races. He and those people are confused. They're not stupid. When I say that we're sorry for slavery, Oh boy, I wonder when that hasn't been said before. It only took us centuries to apologize for slavery, which was done centuries ago. Yes, because slavery was such a small thing that time erased it. Also, the structure of that sentence confused me. When that hasn't been said before, it only took centuries. When we didn't have electricity, and before I was born! The way you said that implies that you don't think slavery was such a huge deal. In fact, if you're going to apologize for slavery, apologize to the ones that have been enslaved. Because most of these, I doubt most of these black people nowadays can go in slavery. I doubt anybody can. Try googling modern day slavery. Unless they were brought up in some kind of fucked up cult. So... You're actually apologizing to the wrong people. I'm not being racist or anything, but the fact I ha the fact you're apologizing for something to happen centuries ago to people who haven't been enslaved is kind of irrelevant. I don't know, maybe he's angry because his ancestors didn't feel any remorse for it. You know, we didn't mean to and that you know, it was for the economy, but it wasn't right. Whatever happened to the saying of, let bygones be bygones? I mean, wasn't that done by people before we were born? So isn't that kind of like pushing someone else's um, fault and saying it's our fault? That's a little bit bad if you ask me. He's apologizing because the slave owners didn't. And once again, I must stress the fact that you think slavery doesn't matter anymore because it's old. It wasn't right. I'm gonna have a long awkward pause and look dramatic, like I actually mean I apo I'm apologizing. Or maybe he's just thinking of what to say next. Don't say he should have written on his hand because he would look funny reading it. But let's say he is having a long dramatic pause. You really think he doesn't think bad about slavery? And we're sorry. It's just, it's bullshit, you know? It's bullshit that white people haven't gotten theirs, but every other race has! Well, I mean, that's not all particularly true. I mean, you can't exactly clump all of us white people together because that is still racist in its own way. The same as if we all clump black people together, that makes us all fucking racist. But, uh, in the Victorian ages, children were forced to work in dangerous conditions. Women didn't have any rights. So, technically... Some people did have their, um... And I'm sorry, okay? I might not be technically part of the white race. Obviously, this guy's been attacked by white people quite often because he's a ginger. I think this is why he thinks it's another race, because he's picked on because of it. Here's what Slappy said. Yeah, I guess that also makes blondes not a part of the white race. I guess that also makes albinos not part of the white race. Because that is still bullshit. 
If you're ginger, brunette, blonde, and you're white, you're technically part of the white race. The same, the same with if you have a different colour and you're a black person, I'm not sure how the genetics work if you're black. Let me see if I heard you right. If a white person has different colored hair, it doesn't affect his race. But you're not sure if a black person's hair color affects their race. I really hope I heard that wrong. But you're still technically that type of person. Also, that is bullshit because I remember one guy who was albino. He looked completely white, but he had the genetics of a black person. Then maybe Copper Cab is part black, and that's why he feels like he's not part of the white race. So that's still bullshit. But... I'm gonna speak for my parents and everyone before them! Dude, when I say uh, that they are, are you, sorry, Are you fucking crying? And I hope that you all... Problem. Have a wonderful Martin Luther King Day! And I all hope you have a Merry Christmas! That's how I spelt the holidays as well. Okay? I hope you are having a great one. And I'm gonna say it one more time, sorry. For slavery. Uh, stop apologizing, we fucking get it now! When you say you're sorry, that's it, you dipshit. You don't need to apologize over and over and over and over again. Love the maturity here. And that... They may not have meant it, but- I'm sorry, what? Did you just say we may not have men tits? Men tits! What the hell? Pronounce better! Every single time I heard him say that line, no matter how hard I tried to change it, I kept hearing meant it. God! They really fucked some shit up! How dare people make mistakes! How dare the centuries past be so primitive! Why would you go and enslave another race? We are all human beings! Yeah, and you're not one of them, it seems. Right about here, when I was watching the video for the first time, I decided to do my commentary. You see, the whole time she's been doing nothing but insulting, swearing, and making fun of him. Because according to South Park, you don't have a soul! I know what it's like to have all that shit put on me! So, you know what it's like to be punished with a whip? You know what it's like working 24 hours with little rest? You know what it's like, um, living in a horrible home? You know what it's like just being a complete and utter outcast and being called the N-word? Do you seriously know what slavery is like? I have no idea how you mistook his statement for that. He obviously meant the discrimination, and like you said at the end, being an outcast. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, I know what it's like to be, you know, hated on. You know, here's something I've got to point out. You're being racist to your own race. You're basically clumping all the white people together and saying, we're not, we don't feel remorse for the black people that were put in slavery centuries ago. Can you point me to the part where he said that? He's saying that the people before us enslaved people. Not us. People before us. Yeah, I can't imagine what it's like being put in slavery. I can't imagine it. I somewhat feel sorry for them. But... You're kind of being racist yourself by clumping us all together and making us all seem like complete and utter... ...assholes. So, you're making fun of him and swearing, and yet, you think it's wrong that he's calling us assholes? Not all of us are like that, and many of us are not like that. In fact, most racism is actually looked down upon in today's society. Because of the way you look. I'm sorry. And from the bottom of my heart and soul. Insert South Park ginger soul joke here. Didn't you insert that joke already? Black people, I love you. And I know it's not right. I know it's not right. I know it's not right. And you know, I'm a ginger and proud of it, just like you're all proud to be black. 
White people should not have ever done that! Well, it's not like we have time machines to go back into the past and say, Hey, um, you're enslaving black people. It's not right. Don't do it. So... Still doesn't mean we should have done it. I'm not saying not to forget about it, I'm just saying the fact that you're crying and apologizing over it to people who haven't been enslaved or haven't experienced it is pretty much irrelevant and stupid. They fought with all of us! We're all in the same boat! We are all in the same boat! We're all in the same boat! Because we all know what it's like to be hated on by white people! Again, with the racism and the girl You can't just ignore the racism and discrimination. Also, there's a difference between segregation and racism, you know. Racism can go both ways, you know. It just doesn't go for black people, it could go for white people. So be careful when you're trying to clump all the white people together as jackasses. <laughs> I'm a ginger and I'm proud of it. I hope you're all having a good Martin Luther King Day. I love you all. And to all the fucking trolls and haters out there, fuck you! Fuck you all. Luckily for all you people, I created a replica of that scene. And I think you will all enjoy it. It is a very accurate replica. And to all the fucking trolls and haters out there, fuck! <laughs> fuck you all. That is one big pile of shit. Sorry, Slappy, but you kinda missed your mark. No one likes a jerk. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this video got more dislikes than likes. Wait, what? And you have more subscribers than me? Oh well, I guess some people just like this sort of stuff. If they do, I've got some changes to make for an upcoming video. Good evening everybody. Today I'm going to do my first game review. What game am I going to review today? Well, it's on the Wii. Today we're going to play Sonic and the Black Knight. Now there's been a lot of hype for this game. You know all those Sonic faggots out there just busting balls over Sonic the Hedgehog and They've been all over YouTube talking about, this game looks incredible, Sonic with a sword, oh, right! When the game was coming out, I heard absolutely nothing but hate for it. Nothing about liking it. Well, no, Sonic Facts, this game did not revive Sonic. In fact, it made the Werehog look like it was God of War good. I haven't played Sonic Unleashed, but let's see if he can convince me that Sonic and the Black Knight sucks. So, I don't want to play this long, so let's go ahead and get started. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for the bad cinematography, but I don't have a way to capture a video from my consoles right now. Right, let's go ahead and go to continue. As you can see on there later, I did not get very far without quitting. You haven't even gotten to the first set of credits, and yet you're reviewing it. Didn't the irate gamer do something like that once? Sure, I might have reviewed Metroid without completing it. But I actually went back and finished it, and my opinions haven't changed. Let's see. Let me just go through some of the... Let's see. Let's try this. Yeah, the menu looks pretty nice. And the graphics on this thing is really, really good, too. I gotta say, this thing has got some great graphics. But the thing that kills this game the most is the... God darn gameplay. Oh. You just swing the Wii mode. He just does. Did you know that you can use the control stick in conjunction with the Wii remote in order to change Sonic's moves? And what about the Soul Gauge, Blackbuster? Random slashes. Simple enough. All I have to do is swing the Wii mode. Sonic doesn't go very fast in this game either. Now we're Don't do it. Even without the soul gauge, he can still move pretty fast if you can serve sword swings and jumping. Just swing the remote. I want you to 
He's pretty much on a track on this thing, so you don't get to do much side-to-side -side stuff. Can you seriously imagine trying to control Sonic with a sword in a complete 3D environment? People would complain about how hard it is to hit enemies. Yeah, Sonic. God dang it. Oh, targets. I get to slash him. What the heck, I slashed that one without even swinging my sword. Did you mean this one? Because I heard swinging. You see that? Just made it. Yeah, just made it. Whatever, Sonic. The levels are super short, too. If what I'm heard, uh, the storyline is even shorter. This is nitpicking, but the story is made up of multiple levels. You can't add a bunch of positive numbers and wind up with less than what you started with. Also, one of the so-called features Sega put in here is that you collect items. That's it. You just you acquire items. This is one of the only a bit of speed on it. But still, this game has got to be made for babies. It's the simplest game in the entire universe. I mean, look. All I have to do is hold up and just swing my Wiimote, and I just I win. Win, win, win. The only problem with your argument is that it's one of the first levels. Aren't video games supposed to get gradually harder? If you could find a level like this halfway through the game, you should show that instead. And so much challenge, right? As you can tell, swinging the Wii Remote over and over again will harm townspeople, lowering the amount of followers you have. Good job. So much fun. Also in the game, Sonic does get like abilities or something. But who cares? Who would want to play that long? Oh yeah, Sonic fags. So patience is what makes a Sonic fag, huh? He was all oh, throw my panties at Sonic. Viewer, keep this message in mind. It'll come in handy. Oh, time to get my hedgehog abilities. You angered the hedgehog. Yeah. Go, Sonic. Can't wait to shove my penis in your butthole. I, for one, found this game to be very entertaining. Does that mean that I want to fuck Sonic the Hedgehog? I'm sorry, I just don't see any connection. Get out of my way, civilians. More bad guys? I know what to do. Oh no! That's another thing. This thing doesn't register all your waggles as attacks. Let's imagine that it was sensitive enough so that it can pick up the slightest movement. That would suck. You don't have to fight people, you just jump right over them. Don't jump. You don't have to fight these people. It, it's the most retarded thing ever! Okay, first off, this. Why did you complain about this if you don't care about score? I mean, you want to jump over enemies, don't you? Second, now you're complaining about jumping over the enemies and not fighting them. Not only does it contradict this statement, but it's done in tons of video games. There's Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3, Super Mario World, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy 2, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, 3, Sonic and Knuckles, and pretty much every other Sonic game. And in all of them, you can jump over enemies. Oh my god. This is not even a game.
I'm winning. I really hope I am. Once again, I must stress that this is an early level. Let's see you beat the whole game like that. Wait a minute, what the hell am I doing? Here's some good old-fashioned proof. Okay, here I'm just swinging along, swinging along, swinging along. These guys show up. I can't break free. Luckily they don't take all my rings, so I just keep swinging along. Got one of them. So now I'm down to my last seven rings. And on impact, I die. And here's one for shits and giggles. Look, am I winning? I don't know. I think I am. I'm All I'm holding is up and just swinging the Wiimote. That is all I'm doing. I don't even think I heard myself lose any rings yet. I don't think I did. Jumped a couple times just to add variety, you know. I hope, I'm, I hope you're getting them, Sonic. I hope you're getting them. I hope you're getting them, Sonic. With your new sword. Oh. oh, right, Sega. Thanks for giving me a sword. Now I can fight stuff in a new storybook that I game that I have. I just don't understand how they could... How could they do this? The game is not fast. If you think Sonic's slow now, then wait until you level up. He'll get much faster. Sonic has a sword? And you still have all those gay, still stupid furry characters in it. Well, they've been cutting back, haven't they? I'm still pretty pissed off that they didn't put Big the Cat in it, though. Jesus Christ. Yeah, who is it? Come in. See, I can answer the door and still win. I don't have to look at the game. Hate to nitpick, but that's not answering the door. That's telling someone that they can come in. I don't have to look. What's up, man? How you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. Alright. Yeah, oh I'm a, I'm playing Sonic and the Black Knight, man. Well, I'm going to it, leave it's so, it's so much fun. I can't wait to bang Sonic, you know. <laughs> Sonic does suck. Yes he does. I don't have to look at the game! Don't even have to look! That sucks. Long story short, Sonic and the Black Knight is a terrible, terrible game. I don't know what Sonic Team is doing now, but I really want to t say things to you uh, Sonic fans out there. The game is not incredible. I know it's not incredible, but it's still fun as hell to play. I don't know why you guys just blow up on everything that comes out with Sonic. I can't speak for everyone, but if a Sonic game comes out and I like it, that's completely coincidental. All his games are bad, all of them. If you played Sonic 06, there is no way in hell you can tell me any good qualities of that game. Wait, why are we talking about Sonic as a whole again? I thought this was a review for Black Knight. I guess people just can't help but bring up Sonic 06, can they? But hey, while we're at it, take a look at this level in Super Mario Galaxy 2. It's halfway through the game. See? Nintendo thinks you're an idiot. Just like this one, there are no good qualities. The multiplayer is laughable. It's laughable. It's the sorriest multiplayer feature I've ever seen. No footage, Blackbuster. The whole clicking items thing, that's standard in the Sonic games. Because they want you to run back and forth on the same levels over and over and over again. Trying to just rape, 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 increase the value of the game. Well, the replay value, although it really doesn't have any. Leaderboards, who cares? Who cares about getting the fastest time? All I do is hold up and swing the Wiimote. I'm not repeating myself. But no, if you want to go fast, you can't hold up and just keep swinging. That's all I need to do. Oh, what else? I will give 
at one thing. The graphics were impressive. They really were, well, at least for the trailer. At least. But the best thing about this game is Merlina. She is adorable. I can't wait to get some hentai of that. Just like this one, there are no good qualities. We'll give it one thing. The graphics were impressive. They really were, well, at least for the trailer. At least. But the best thing about this game is Merlina. She is adorable. Just like this one, there are no good qualities. But other than that, this game deserves to be burned in the pits of hell, along with its creators and all the other Sonic fags out there drawing Sonic fan art, drawing their Sonic recolors, doing their Sonic fan fictions, and putting their fan characters into Sonic X screenshots, and all the other Sonic faggotry. You guys aren't even human anymore. Who are you to tell me whether or not I'm a human? I don't make Sonic recolors, and I don't write Sonic fan fiction. But other people do, and you're gonna have to live with that. It's not like calling them inhumans gonna make them stop, either. But this is Blackbuster Critic. I'm telling you not to play Sonic in the Black Knight. I'm telling you not to. Good night. This picture stays here for 26 seconds, so I'm gonna speed it up. So whether he did it bluntly or discreetly, he skewed a few things to make the game look worse than it actually is. I recommend Sonic and the Black Knight to anybody that can look beyond the waggle motion. Also, Blackbuster Critic, I've watched a few of your videos, and if you can tell me how Michael Dragon 800's liking a video about tap dancing means he faps to it, let me know. Is it Halloween already? This episode was uploaded on August 22nd, and it's not a Halloween-themed episode, so what's with the text? Hey, what's happening gamers? It's Kwing here with another classic review. This time, we're taking a look at Tetris for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Long before Brain Age and Sudoku games flooded the market, a long time ago, we had Tetris, created by this guy. Anyway, Tetris released on various home systems in the mid-80s, until... Nintendo claimed copyright and won in a lawsuit over the other developers. I'm not one to hate a history lesson on a classic video game, but that was kind of long, don't you think? You could have just said, oh, it's made by this Russian guy and there was a lawsuit because everyone loved it in Nintendo 1. Out of all the ports, Tetris on the Game Boy ended up being the biggest hit, selling a staggering 35 million copies worldwide. Anybody who has seen my Outside Factors rant remembers that Tetris was one of the best-selling video games of all time because it was bundled with the Game Boy. So in reality, the Game Boy sold 35 million copies and Tetris sold zero. This game was wicked addicting. In fact, the year I got my Game Boy, it came with this game. I remember Christmas of 1989 when my own father wouldn't even let me play my own Game Boy. It got so bad my mom... We're a minute into this video, and all we heard was a history lesson and a nostalgia trip. Content, please. I had to tell him, that's Luke's Christmas present, not yours, John. Ah, memories. Still, my dad wasn't the only one sucked into the world of Tetris. Everyone was. But we're moving on. The gameplay consists of dropping blocks in rows and dissolving them to earn points. It sounds easy, but don't believe that for a second. Tetris is not a game to be taken lightly. This game requires a lot of strategy, quick thinking, changing the shapes of the blocks, and it will make you use your brain more than you usually do. Oh yes, stacking blocks is quite thrilling. This was a different type of game to be sure. It took skill and lots and lots of patience. Whether or not it takes skill is a matter of opinion. Because how hard can it be to stack blocks? Just move your control pad left, right, up and down. Something I don't have very much of. 
The further you get in this game, the faster the blocks descend, depending on the level, of course. When this happens, you can no longer control the speed of the blocks, either. Call me nitpicky, but you're always given the option to speed up the blocks if you want. Nintendo just didn't leave the game alone, either. They had to make a few tweaks here and there and make it even more challenging. So how did they do that? by making the music go faster the closer to the top you are. Not only does the music speed up, but so does the blocks! I remember this game made for a lot of agonizingly tense moments, along with a lot of screaming at my TV and Game Boy. More nostalgia. For its day, Tetris was revolutionary. That's what I thought at first, but then I talked to my friend about it. He said Tetris brought nothing new to the table. Let's see. No, the score score screen was an Atari. Music speeding up when you're in trouble? No, that was Super Mario Brothers. No, oh, I give up. Sure, it was a simple concept, dissolve the blocks to get a high score. Add on simple and super addictive gameplay and you had a great game you would sit and play for hours. Or in my case, an hour a day. Yes, I was only allowed to play video games for an hour a day when I was a little kid. After that, I was forced to go outside and play, use my coloring book, or play with my G.I. Joes. My I'm gonna summarize your entire review in five seconds. Oh, I remember when I played this game when I was a kid. Ten out of ten. If I ever review a video game, I'll make sure not to imitate you. My biggest regret about this game has to do with the fact that people have done bad reviews about it. Shouldn't a person's biggest regret be something that they did? And we're talking really bad. They say the game is boring, the graphics suck, and it's too hard. Tear. Frankly, this is the reason I started doing retro reviews right in the first place. Unlike them, I was there during the Golden Age, back when the dinosaurs roamed the Earth. You don't have to be at the time of the video game's release in order to play the game. So your word is only as credible as theirs. Don't go acting like that makes you more credible. I played more than a few genres, so I had a more diverse gaming upbringing than them. So I don't agree with them about this game being boring. There is just too much going on for it to be boring. Seriously, just think of all the stuff you had to do in Tetris. Change shapes, plan ahead, think on your feet. There's no time to be bored at all. But yes, this game is extremely hard and I agree with them. But please, name one retro game that held your hand. Color a dinosaur. Tetris is an insanely brilliant game, and this is one that I suggest you guys download for the Wii's Virtual Con- <laughs> Hey, wait a second. It's not on the Virtual Console? Blasphemy! Talk about depriving a generation! Uh, well, there comes a time in every gamer's life where you need to hunt for good games. Or for Tetris, you can just go to Tetris Friends. Sure, you could use Amazon, but that's half the fun. No, I'm gonna recommend you guys go to a garage sale. What makes this even better is you find dumb parents throwing away their grown-up child's NES or Super NES collection for really cheap. Good times. Yeah, but the time you spend going to garage sales, looking at garage sales, being disappointed in looking at more, really adds up. Time is money, but if you're willing to spend hours looking for a video game in a garage sale that you can just find off of eBay for 15 bucks, be my guest. Alrighty, that does it for me gamers. Keep checking back on the new and improved K-Wing Reviews channel for a new classic retro review every Monday. Also, please follow me on my Twitter account to stay up to date with the different style of reviews that I do. Well, this has been K-Wing saying God bless and happy gaming. Thank you so much for watching and until we meet again gamers. What score is it out of 10? Out of 100? Out of 5? The main problem with his review is that he went on three different nostalgia trips. If he didn't do that, then I probably would have overlooked his video. So I've commentated on Roshatsu, Supersonic 407, Chief Shadow 1750, The Game Dude, Darkness the Curse, CJS 0, 01, and now K-Wing.
Oh sure, I could have commentated on it, but I would just be nitpicking the whole time. Now here's his top 10 worst developers. That came out in 1982. Did you actually play it? Did you forget that Acclaim helped with Mortal Kombat? How many Simpsons games have they blown? Just about all of them. If anyone can tell me a good Fox Interactive game, you know, don't even try. It's one of the worst video game studios ever. A cow has better programming skills. Why use Screw Attack as a source when you could cite your own experiences? You said that they're all highly religious like it's a bad thing. Also, insert concept card here. But why are they vomit inducing? A little explanation can go a long way. You know, choosing a bunch of developers that the angry video game nerd hates and games that are notable for negative reception kinda destroys your credibility. Did you actually play the games? Yes, because gameplay doesn't matter, old chop. As long as Link can't wait to bomb some Dodongos, we are in trouble. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but concept card. Also, way to ignore all these other AO titles. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Wait, so not putting your name on a title screen is really bad? I hate to make an accusation like this, but because you cite Screw Attack, the angry video game nerd, and use old video games everywhere, have you actually played them? Or are you like this guy who's trying to defend Metroid? I mean, if you're really gonna go as far as saying that the developers suck for making the video game, the least you can do is play it. 